Good morning and welcome to News Breakfast. It's Tuesday. It's great to have your company. I'm Michael Rowland. And I'm Virginia Trioli. Good morning. Glad you could join us. Making news today, bribery, extortion and threats of violence lifting the lid on corruption in the construction industry. The building and construction industry uh, lends itself to organised crime. Betrayed by a relative, actor Jude Law shocked by new evidence at a phone hacking trial. The search for a young croc attack victim turns from rescue to recovery. Leading sport this morning, the Australian Test Squad's dream run with injuries is over with some concerns about Sean Marsh and James Faulkner. Let's have a look at some other news today and it's been revealed that a close relative of actor Jude Law was paid to leak stories about him to Rupert Murdoch's now defunct tabloid News of the World. The information came to light during the phone hacking trial of former news editors Rebecca Brooks and Andy Colson. Mr Law was giving testimony when he was handed a note with a family member's name on it. He told the court he had no idea the information was being leaked. There's still no sign of a 12-year-old boy taken by a crocodile in Kakadu National Park. Northern Territory Police say the search and rescue operation will soon become a recovery effort. The boy was attacked while swimming with friends in a billabong on Sunday. Police have shot and killed two four-metre crocodiles during their search for the boy. Sri Lankan police are searching for a man suspected of having raped an Australian woman at the weekend. Sri Lankan media is reporting that the woman was on a study tour from the Australian National University in Canberra. The ANU says it's looking into the matter but has not been able to confirm the media reports. The Department of Foreign Affairs says it's providing assistance to an Australian woman in Sri Lanka but will not provide any other details at this stage. Egypt's top military body has given its approval for Army Chief Field Marshal Abdel Fattah al-Sisi to run for the presidency. Field Marshal Sisi led the overthrow of President Mohamed Morsi in July last year following mass demonstrations against his rule. He's expected to accept the nomination and resign from his military position within days. The army chief is widely popular and is tipped to win the presidential election, which is due to be held in April. The Royal Commission into Child Sexual Abuse begins its fifth session of public hearings in Sydney today. It will be examining abuse cases at four Salvation Army children's homes in Queensland and New South Wales. Many of the cases date back to the 1960s and 70s, but were not reported until the 1990s. Let's take a quick look at finance. And a short time ago, the Dow was a quarter of a percent lower. London's FTSE lost more than 1.5% overnight. The Australian dollar is buying 87.4 US setting the Tuesday morning newspapers. And the Sydney Morning Herald has more on that Fairfax 7.30 investigation. It says union figures have been using their influence to ensure companies linked to crime figures and outlaw motorcycle gangs get the CFMEU's backing for big private and government projects. The Canberra Times says the construction industry rackets involve labour hire, traffic management, scaffolding, crane and building companies. According to the Financial Review, one CFMEU official has already quit after being told of that investigation. The Age reports union figures have been given tickets to sporting events and money to gamble at casinos by the owners of the companies seeking their support. The Courier-Mail shows the Queensland MP photographed sculling a beer while upside down. Can you do that during an Australia Day party? Andrew Lamming says it was just a bit of light-hearted fun. In the Herald Sun, teachers are calling for more CCTV-style cameras in schools because of an increase in violence emanating from students. Australia and Japan are set to sign a free trade agreement in July. That's according to The Australian. The deal would provide a boost for Australian businesses, particularly agricultural exporters. The Guardian Australia looks at the fire danger in parts of the country today, with temperatures expected to 45 degrees in some areas. The advertiser has figures showing thousands of cereal drink drivers have been convicted three times or more over the last decade. The British firm charged with running WA's court security has given its employees the all clear of the escape of three prisoners earlier this month. That's on the front page of the West Australian along with a very beautiful looking beach. Doesn't that water look just fantastic? Divine. In the Mercury, a leading business group is calling on the Tasmanian government to develop a multi-million dollar convention centre on the Hobart Rail Yard site. A mother has told the Northern Territory News about her son's terror as he watched his close friend attacked by a crocodile. The 12-year-old who was taken is still missing. The Daily Telegraph also looks at the issue of union corruption and it has a wrap of the Grammys with New Zealand songwriter Lord picking up two awards. 
possibility of it happening as, happening as soon as tomorrow. If so, it will be Queensland's first for the season. We can see all of this cloud that is built up. The tropics are very active at the moment and there's a deepening low in the Coral Sea. This is being fed by the monsoonal trough and the current models are suggesting Dillon will form tomorrow, perhaps moving in a southwest direction towards Queensland. And we also have an area of high pressure down over the southeast, a total fire ban with very hot winds across South Australia, Victoria and Tasmania. There will be a brief cool change pushing in from late this afternoon into the evening. For Queensland today, you've got squally rain and storms along the coastline down to about Rockhampton and across the northwest and peninsula. Sugar has picked up 60 millimetres and will have strong and gusty winds along the east coast. They'll tend to gale force with warnings uh, between Cardwell and Gladstone. In New South Wales and up in the north, once again, we've got the chance of these isolated showers, but for the rest of the state, very warm. 27 degrees in Sydney, still around 36 degrees for Burke and up to 39 in Broken Hill. Very hot across Victoria with fresh northerly winds ahead of a cooler gusty southwesterly change. It'll start in the southwest from this afternoon. By tonight it will push through the central and northwestern parts of the state. 39 degrees in Melbourne but as high as 42 degrees in Swan Hill. Tasmania hot northwesterly winds. The cooler southwesterly change is due this evening and from this afternoon scattered showers about the west and far south. 36 degrees the top in Hobart and 34 Swansea. Very hot northeasterly winds for South Australia. During the day we'll get a mild but gusty southerly change passing over the west and south. Possible storms over the northwest, 41 degrees in Adelaide and 42 windy in Wyala. Western Australia showers and the chance of thunderstorms for areas of the Gascoyne goldfields and nuclear, but it will still be fine along the west coast, 31 degrees in Perth. Showers and thunderstorms for the north of the state, fine over the Northern Territory southeast, but showers and storms elsewhere will have very heavy falls around the coastlines, 31 degrees in Darwin. Around the nation for tomorrow, morning shower for Brisbane as you head for a top of 29 degrees. Bit of relief down there in the southeast, but it will be only temporary. Melbourne 25, 22 degrees in Hobart, but we can see the heat moving into Canberra with a top of 37 degrees.